Hi, welcome to Left Foot Media. My name is Brendan Malone. Well, I've literally just walked in the door from having been to see Star Wars Rogue One. And in my humble opinion, I think that Star Wars Rogue One is probably the best Star Wars movie that's ever been made. If not the best, it's definitely on an equal footing with The Empire Strikes Back, which is saying a lot about this movie. Having seen this film, uh, I think that uh, possibly the studios are working a bit of a clever little strategy here. Uh, time will tell when more Star Wars movies come out. We'll know for certain whether this is the case. But I suspect what's going on is that the studios have decided that these standalone movies are actually going to be targeted at people like me. <clears throat> so the older generation of Star Wars fans who are a bit older, who generally like a darker tone to their movies, uh, who generally have... Uh, particular expectations about Star Wars that say the younger generation don't have um, and these standalone films are going to be targeted at us whereas the new trilogy is really I think targeted at a younger audience so for example in this film there are no young actors the main characters are not young people whereas it's the exact opposite in The Force Awakens uh, and I, I, th I think, as I said, I think this could be deliberate. I think this really could be a deliberate ploy here to try and keep both sets of fans, because there really are two demographics now, uh, happy uh, and satisfied with this new Star Wars universe. One thing I think as well that's certainly this movie I would suggest has made very clear is that if you want to make these standalone movies successful, then they need to be tied very clearly to major events that already exist in the Star Wars universe, or to, uh, to main characters that already exist. If they're too disconnected and they're just some other story that's told way off in the distance, I don't think they're going to be as successful. I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but, but my uh, overriding belief is that the reason we like Star Wars is because of the total package. We, th there's a whole characterization, there's a whole universe, and that universe really hangs around major key events, major key characters, major key villains and good guys. And, and we want to be connected to that whole um, mythology. We don't, I don't think we want something that's so separate. You know, we, we don't want to w watch a political espionage thriller about some sort of Senate infighting that's happening on some random planet that's got absolutely nothing apart from some basic connection with the universe to do with any of the sort of major characters and events that we already know. I, th I, I just don't think that's going to work. You know, we don't want to watch some Star Wars themed uh, or universe themed romance or, or drama or you know or, or, or deep serious art house film we want it to be connected with and in the style of what we already know and that means connecting it back to those major characters and events and this movie did that really really well uh, there's no cheese well there's one little line that possibly was was a little bit cheesy but there's really no cheese in this film as I said the tone is darker it's not somber it's not R-rated but it has a darker tone the stakes are real, which I really loved, and I think that was something that, had, that was missing from the original trilogy. I know in the original trilogy that um, Harrison Ford was really adamant that his character uh, had to die in that first act of Return of the Jedi, and he felt that to make the whole uh, series meaningful, that his character had to die to give it some weight, and that would also throw a cat amongst the pigeons and leave people wondering... You know, is is uh, you know, if, if a character is as major as uh, Han Solo can die, then does that mean that anybody could die by the end of this final instalment of the original trilogy? Uh, but the writers and George Lucas uh, they decided against that, and I think that was, to be fair, I think that was one of the downfalls of the original trilogy was that d just by the end time it had finished, the stakes didn't quite seem real. But in this one, the stakes are real. There's also a there are some also some moral ambiguities, really, and in fact, not just ambiguities, but there's some unethical behaviour that goes on as part of the Rebel Alliance, and it gives it a much more real and grounded sort of feel. Um, in some ways, they're probably a little bit too sort of sparkly, pearly white and, and pure in the original one, whereas this one gives it a bit more of a, a believable edge. It's not a perfect film, though. Now, some people have complained about character development. I don't think that's an issue to be honest with you. A, I'm not sure how they could have developed this because it's an ensemble a cast of characters and I'm not sure how they could have developed any one of these characters in any more detail without dragging out this movie unnecessarily and making it uh, unnecessarily long uh, and cumbersome. It's actually a very clean and well told story. It just moves very very efficiently. 
and so I don't understand that complaint that I've seen some people making. Which interestingly, and maybe ironically, um, some of the people who have been making that complaint about the lack of character development were some of the same people who complained about the fact that there was sort of too much character development and backstory going on with the Star Wars prequels, which I agree with, by the way. And I actually think this movie got the right tone. We don't need to know every little thing about a character. And that's what the original trilogy did well. You didn't need to know every single little detail about a character. Boba Fett was so intriguing because of the, the mystery that surrounded him. And there was so much you could sort of, your imagination could fill in. Well, this movie is very much a return to that style of storytelling. So I don't think that's a fair complaint. However, there were some issues. So number one, there's one particular character, with two characters, in order to actually have them present in this film, um, they have to... Uh, they have to use, uh, I believe it was, they used um, motion uh, capture uh, and CGI uh, for these particular characters. And um, it just was a little bit distracting because that technology is still not perfect. One character, the first instant, instance of this, it's used in two different contexts. And this one, the first uh, context, the first instance in which it's used in this character, we see a lot more of than the other. And so I found that one a bit more distracting. Um, and it just it just doesn't... I, I, I was thinking about it as I was watching the movie, and I think it's really the eyes and the eye muscles. It's around this part of the face where it doesn't quite work. The eyes the eyes of, of these characters, they, they just they look a bit dead. Um, so I won't say any more, but maybe you have a, a different perspective on it. But I think the, the second instance I actually thought was quite good. But it's uh, it's certainly a lot better than the um, the the same type of technology that I've seen used in other movies in the last ten years. So it's the the technology's come on in leaps and bounds. Uh, so that's one little thing. It's not the end of the movie though, by the way. It's not something that you go, oh, that was really bad. It's just it's just a little niggle. The other thing that I found a bit frustrating, and it's really only in the first probably thirty minutes or so of this film, is it just felt a little bit like the sound design the sound work wasn't quite as good as it could have been and what i mean by that is that you've got this ensemble cast of characters and some of them have uh, accents uh, and ways of speaking which leave you sort of asking yourself what they just said you're having to think twice about some of the lines that are delivered you're trying to decipher what's being said and i think part of it from anyway maybe it's just the theater that i was in but part of it for me, I think, was the fact that <clears throat> it just felt a little bit muddy. So not only were some of those lines delivered with an accent, but I think that if, if maybe they'd sharpened up the, the, you know, the mid to high range frequencies on those lines, that might have helped things a little bit better in deciphering them. But as I said, it's only very briefly and it starts to come right. Um, as the movie progresses, it's just it's not really an issue. But at the beginning, it was I found it a little bit frustrating because it's a fast-moving movie. There's dialogue lines being dropped, and you're meeting new characters, and so it was a little bit frustrating. Some of the lines were you sort of a little bit like, what did they say? You had to or you had to stop and do a bit of a double take on it. I actually wouldn't be surprised if because this movie had some reshoots involved in it. I wouldn't be surprised if some of those reshoots were actually around some of these lines that were delivered because you will notice if you go and see the film there's a couple of times when a character will say something and then another character will ask the question in a diff and use a different word one scene in particular i'm thinking of the, the character used a different turn to describe the exact same thing and asked a question as in oh you mean the <laughs> you know you mean the the fishing tank you know and or you mean the horse and so, obviously, that's not what they say at all. But the point is that I wouldn't be surprised if, to, to, to learn that those were dropped in to actually, um, or because the director maybe, or uh, the writers were aware, or someone was aware involved in the production, that perhaps some of these, uh, the delivery of some of these lines wasn't quite as clear as it could have been. So they needed just another little... Uh, um, tip for the audience to, to get their head around what was going. Uh, there's some great connections to the original trilogy. It's done pretty well. There's one scene with two characters in particular who just appear. It's a cameo. They are in the scene very briefly and then they move on again. Um, I felt that was a little bit cumbersome. That's one scene or one connection with the original trilogy that I felt was a little bit cumbersome. And I thought, well, what's that doing in there? It doesn't quite make sense. It doesn't quite yeah, it didn't quite make sense why these two particular characters would be where they were. And I found that one a little bit cumbersome. But other than that, 
there's some really cool little nods and little Easter eggs back to the original uh, movie. In the, in the opening scene of this film, keep an eye out for the, the jug of liquid in the kitchen. I won't say any more, but keep an eye out for that. And if you're a fan of the original trilogy, you'll love that little nod. Uh, the one thing that I think that some people who perhaps aren't so steeped in the Star Wars lore... And I could, I sensed this. I heard this in the in the audience around me as, as I was watching the movie today. Uh, when Darth Vader appears in this movie, um, he's in a particular place. And uh, if you if you're well steeped and well versed in Star Wars mythology, you'll know and you'll recognise and you'll appreciate uh, the context and and the environment in which Darth Vader appears. If you're not so familiar, it might seem a little bit odd. And I sort of got the sense from some of the people around me, they didn't quite understand why he was appearing the first time he appears in the film, where he appeared. But it's uh, it's, but that was great to see that. Um, the one thing about Darth Vader, as some have said, and I think it's fair, is that there could have been more of him. Uh, I think Darth Vader really could have been the main villain in this. But in saying that, I still don't think it's as big a deal as some others have made out of it, uh, made it made out this out to be. Uh, I think it actually it works. It still works quite well, and there's enough of a balance there, so it's not he's not too cumbersome and overused. And interestingly, I think the way they've used him is probably more consistent with how he was and what he was as a character in that original um, Star Wars movie, which has now been titled A New Hope where in actual fact even though he's this vile evil villainous bad guy he's not really the guy in charge that's something that sort of subsequently develops and it was certainly you know uh, much more developed in subsequent films um, and so this movie is really more consistent with that and so i i, I think i appreciated that part of it but as i said it would have been nice to maybe see a little bit more so as i said this is probably for me the best Star Wars movie that I've ever seen, and I was there for uh, I was there for the originals from Empire onwards. I remember going to see Empire in the theatre when it first came out, and uh, this movie is certainly uh, similar in tone and it's on a par with that. Um, and I have to say, as I said the stakes felt real in this film. The tension was there. I was, you know, I was I was wondering whether they were, even though I knew what the outcome was going to be because we all know where this is heading to. It's heading to the start of the original trilogy, so you know what's coming. But even despite that fact that there was so much tension in the ending, that the way this thing culminated and everything came together for that big crescendo. Um, there's a space battle involved. There's there's so much tension there. There's so much tension. The person I went to see it with who was sitting next to me just said, man, this is nail-biting uh, as this was unfolding. And it really was. So this is a great film. I highly recommend it. I'm going to be going back to see it again at least once more. Um, and it'll definitely have pride of place in my Blu-ray collection. So if you haven't seen it, you're arming and ahhing, you're on the fence, go and see this movie. It really is a good film. Uh, for me, <clears throat> it probably is the film of the year. Uh, this is the movie of the year for me, that I, the best movie I've been to see. And as I said, as far as I'm concerned, I think it is the best Star Wars movie. It's probably the Star Wars movie that us older generation of fans were waiting for, or have been waiting several decades to actually see. I think it gets everything right. You you drop right back into the Star Wars universe again in a way that The Force Awakens didn't. You're given a new and original story, but there's familiar characters and events, and it's tied into the universe so well and so seamlessly. There's no cheese or stupidity in there. There's nothing. The movie moves really well. It's efficient. And uh, yes, it does answer one of the age-old uh, problems that Star Wars fans have had with the original trilogy. It actually gives a very good and compelling response to that and solves that whole plot hole once and for all. So it's 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 a which is great. Um, but it's a it's a really really well made movie. And uh, as I said, much far better than what The Force Awakens was I think um, as I said because of the fact it's an original story and it really took us back into that universe in a way that felt far more familiar and it was much more engaging so if I was giving it stars out of five I'd give it the full five it really is in fact I'd probably give it six it's a great film if you haven't seen it go and check it out thanks for watching I'll see you next time on Left Foot Media